Well, no. I mean, definitely public transport is the best. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, but, okay, and I think that's why if you look at our low carbon mobility plan, plan, LCM plan, yeah. So, <laughs> anyway, uh, looking at this, I mean, this is uh, prepared by the previous government, but, you know, we've, we've continued that I think, which, you know, it's nothing wrong because it's a good policy. EV is just part of it. So you also have, we're also talking about alternative fuel, like Sarawak is exploring hydrogen. Um, but we also talk about public transport. So we are not looking at, uh, uh, we are not saying that EV at the cost of everything. Uh, so that's not true, right? And I remember 20, I mean, on Twitter, I'm just, there's some people who, I, I, with due respect to them, when uh, Tun Mahade, when he came into power uh, 2018, he cancelled the LR MRT3, okay, which passes through my constituency. And I spoke out. And I remember the same people who are now criticizing me for promoting EV, they are saying, oh, why aren't you promoting buses? That's cheaper than rail, right? So I agree. I totally agree. I like buses, but let's face it. I mean, we also need rail. I mean, the, because this will be MRT3. is a circle line, right? And I, I, I'm pro-rail. But at the same time, like in any other country, even in UK, even in Singapore, Singapore is going to ban, uh, uh, what do you call that, petrol cars in 2030. But they will allow EV. And we're talking about Singapore, which is very pro-public transport and it's very expensive to own a car, but they still have that EV option because we know that uh, EV is still needed. And lastly, we all, I agree that when you, know, when you look at the... the Previously, you know, we saw Tesla as being so expensive and, and the Beamers and uh, Porsche and whatnot, the, the EVs. But <clears throat> now, of course, you have uh, Tesla selling for 199 or 189 in Malaysia, uh, second cheapest in the world. Um, and then, but you also have the BYDs, which is 160. I know it's not my V yet, but actually, if you go to China, you can get an EV 50K. But there are some other, because our MITI policies. I mean, that one is not for me to answer, but we are already, I think, Zafro has been very uh, firm with our national car makers that they, they, they also have to make the transition uh, because or not, you know, we can't justify uh, anymore uh, that they have to go to have EV models that are affordable. That will be the, to me, will be very crucial. Um, and also, the government, if you remember, I mean, in our budget, is that we put a lot of incentives for motor, uh, e uh, motorbikes, mm -hmm. right? So, so we're not just talking about uh, the kayangan, but we are also, also talking about the rakyat. And there's also things like uh, low carbon mobility and all these things. Oh, sorry, um, uh, micro mobility. Yeah. I think if you use EV today, you still save money compared to using petrol uh, in terms of fuel. But maybe the difference is this big. But in China, it'll be this big because there's no subsidy, right? Mm -hmm. So I think... Um, that has been the main thing, and that's why you know the government is also looking at, at uh, uh, that that uh, retargeting you know of subsidies, so that it's only the really uh, deserving ones that get subsidies. Because today, Ron ninety five, regardless of who, is full is subsidized, right? There's a, there's a cap and all that. Um, so I remember, I mean, like you know, a lot of my friends were having nice cars. Uh, Mercedes, BMW and whatnot, when they first buy, it's always uh, RON 97. And then suddenly when RON 97 is 4 ringgit, then they don't mind, RON 95 is just fine. Uh, which is not fair because we want to help those who are using the motorbikes or the, the MyVs, uh, not the ones who are using the brand new uh, MERS or Beamers, right? So I think that's where the policy has to be, uh, that's the main, that will be the main driver. Yeah, I mean, the other things, yes, yeah, to be helpful, uh, there are other things, I don't know, I mean, um, like, for example, London, you know, the, the ULES, ultra low emissions zone. So if you're going into London, if you're using an old petrol car, which is, which is inefficient, you have to pay a congestion charge. Uh, but if you're using, it doesn't have to be EV, even if you're using a relatively new uh, petrol car after 2005, because the engines are much better, uh, you don't get, because uh, it's less polluting, right? So, I mean, that is one, but I know, I mean, I'm not saying that is our path right now. I'm saying that that will, might, might be... Uh, when we say have uh, MRT3, you know, obviously this is not entirely under my jurisdiction, it's MOT and all that, but that is under that we have mentioned because then, you know, public transport will go to a different level, then we can really tell people that there's another option than just driving into the city. So in developing the whole EV industry, would you 
you say it's a form of maybe greenwashing or benefiting industries? Do you agree? I don't, I don't agree with it because we need EVs. So when you need EVs, they are green. I mean, we have in KL, what, PJ, all over now, we have electric buses, for example. Where are they going to be made, right? So uh, why can't Malaysia, we know, okay, yes, whether we agree, disagree, we, we have a strong automotive industry. It's one of the, uh, what do you call that? One of the uh, long-standing industries that we've had from Tun Mahathir's time. Uh, so I think, you know, but it's there. You can't just like, oh, okay, we don't like it for me. You know, we already have a base. Why don't we make it relevant for today? And that relevance is EV. So that's why PM is working to get Geely, Tesla, uh, everyone in. And, and rare earth will sort of be part of the chain. Um, so I, I wouldn't say it's greenwashing because um, um, EVs are still better than a, a, a petrol uh, powered car. It's still cleaner also, for, also cleaner for the environment. Um, can we is public transport better? Yes, yeah. But but we know that uh, we can't go 100 percent on public transport. It is also announced um, that the federal government will transition its official vehicles to mm. EVs now. Um, how is this going to happen? Are, is the government going to procure a whole fleet of cars at once and sell off the old ones, or and what is the cost of maintenance for the current existing cars as compared to maintaining EVs? Like, how will okay. Um, one is that because government doesn't own a lot of our fleet, like the, the cars that I use is actually rented. Okay. So the, the, there is a company where the government rents the car from. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I mean, I don't know how they're going to work out the details because um, that MITI and MOF will take the discussion. But uh, it's also not going to be done in a big bang. Um, PM is still using his Proton Perdana. Um, so what we're going to do is, uh, is going to be done, I think, some critical ministry. So I think uh, that will be seen as relevant, will be given the chance. And then there are other things. It's not just about this. It's also about the vans. Um, government has a lot of buses, uh, all those things. But, but it won't be. I mean, because government also has, you know, we, we, we have to maneuver very, very the, the, the carefully because the uh, fiscal position is tight. Uh, but a lot of it is not through asset ownership, but a lot of it is through uh, rental. So um, what I can say, uh, yeah, so it won't be uh, in a, on a, a Big Bang uh, basis. It will be big, bit by bit. EVs are generally cheaper because it doesn't have a lot of moving parts. It's just an electric mo motor. I don't have the details. Um, I'll check. Because this is generally me takes the thing, uh, but obviously we promote it in the sense of well, one on the electric side, um, because chargers and all that, but also in the form of uh, uh, environmental friendliness. Uh, but yeah, it is generally much cheaper. You, um, I think uh, servicing is very, very rare because you don't have minyak hitam. <laughs> you know, so all those things that you have to do with an uh, with ICE car, an internal combustion car, you don't have to do with EVs. There has always been a circular, a government circular about temperature being at, it should be at 24 to 25. Mm -hmm. um, for various reasons, I mean, um, you know, it, uh, before this we did not see that uh, it was uh, followed through in many places. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I, I raised up was the fact that uh, the dress code, because we had to wear um, uh, coat and uh, tie. I mean, for the government servants, they have to wear coat, tie. Um, and obviously then, you know, the rooms have to be kept uh, to a certain uh, temperature because, and, and because outside is so hot, you come in, then you know it has to um, you have to use a lot of uh, electricity so in fact the whole thing it was just uh, when i was presenting the paper on the energy efficiency and conservation act so it, you know there was no real debate about it but then i said why don't we start to loosen up our dress code um, so anyway so if but but uh, the the important thing i think when you have with more relaxed dress code it will allow people to follow the, the circular. So if we put it that way, um, then we can, uh, we, you know, we look at the example since it was introduced 2013 to 2017. Mm -hmm. It was about 42 million, 43 million kilowatt hours of saving, which is about 18% from the utility bills. And uh, that helped to reduce about 33,000 um, 
tons of uh, carbon dioxide of emissions. So, so I, you know, it, I think every bit counts. Um, and and uh, the, more, the less electricity we use means the less need to build new power plants. So it's not just about RE, it's also about EE.